Hi, I'm Buriana. Welcome to my channel Art Unplugged. For the last three months or so, I've been talking to you about art, various artists, art movements, artworks. Today, however, I would like to talk about the elephant in the room, COVID-19. We are living a pandemic that will change our existence forever. It is putting to the test every aspect of our life as individuals and societies, and the test results are still pending. Epidemics have occurred many times throughout history, and mankind has always tried to fit them into a meaningful framework according to our beliefs and our level of understanding the world. In this video, I want to see what is art response to the COVID-19 pandemic, and what this response is telling us about us. Let's see. Historically, in Christian European art, pandemics were used to convey a moralist message. Unlike Islam, which considered victims of pandemics martyrs who go straight to heaven, millions of Christians have died of infectious diseases, believing it was their own fault. And countless paintings from the 14th to the 17th century show an angry God presiding over indiscriminate annihilation. In the late Middle Ages, there was even a genre dedicated to the subject, the dance macabre dwelling on the universality of death. No matter one station in life, the dance macabre unites us all. The clergy, the royalty, the rich and famous, the bold and the beautiful. The only thing people could do in an epidemic was pray and accept their fate. Something so well expressed in this miniature showing the citizens of the Belgian city of Tournai burying the dead during the Black Death the solemnity and suffering on their faces. And look how the artist created a sense of downward movement through the descending diagonals. The great master of the Northern Renaissance, Peter Bruegel the Elder, certainly knew how to preach some morality to his contemporaries. Look at his epic painting, The Triumph of Death, painted in 1562. Of course, this is a painting of the Black Death, we see an army of skeletons wreaking havoc across a blackened, desolate landscape. Fires burn in the distance and the sea is littered with shipwrecks. Legions of skeletons advance on the living, who are either fly in terror or try in vain to fight back. The painting depicts people of different social backgrounds, from peasants and soldiers to nobles, as well as a king and a cardinal, being taken by death indiscriminately. Do we guess where the Night Walkers in Game of Thrones came from? As much as I admire the imagination and the detail of this work, heavily infused with Protestant ideas, I see the artist here in some kind of macabre moralist abandonment rather than fear or compassion. We see a very different story in Pietà, the last very personal painting of Titian, one of the greatest masters of the Italian Renaissance. Titian painted the Pietà when Venice was struck by plague. It was made as an ex voto offering, a prayer for the survival of himself and his son Horatio. And here we can see a tablet on which Titian and Horatio are presented praying to the Virgin for delivery from the plague. Titian painted himself here. The figure of the prostrated old man is the artist himself. The master of the warm light here plunges into darkness, a premonition of death. Very much in the spirit of the humanist ideas of the Italian Renaissance, Titian built this religion scene on his own human experience. While it pleads for salvation, the mood is of fear and despair. Unfortunately, his plea went unanswered. Both him and his son died in the plague. However, in the next painting, there is something new. Painted in 1720 by Michel Serre during the great plague which ravaged Marseille, it shows a man in charge, rising above gruesome piles of corpses. He is on horseback, 
visually elevated, literally on top of his game. The sun is shining and above him is blue sky. For the first time, we see hope. The man was Nicola Rose, who was in charge for defending Marseille against this epidemic. He established a quarantine, set up checkpoints and even punishment for the looters, set up a field hospital and organized distribution of humanitarian supply to the population. This is the first depiction of a pandemic hero, the precursor of the many images of medical heroes that we see today. This painting reflects the big change in attitudes which came with the Enlightenment. Now not God, but reason and the evidence of the senses was seen as the source of knowledge, which marked the beginning of science as we know it. Man had made a radical shift towards taking things into his own hands. The great pandemic that ravaged the world during the first half of the 20th century was of course the Spanish flu. Although it killed much more people than the World War I, it was outshadowed by it. Shows you how biased we are in our judgments. Death in battle is heroic. Death in illness, anything but. The two huge tragedies of the World War I and the Spanish flu somehow merged together in the collective consciousness and in art, that led to the rise of a host of avant-garde movements, which turned away from the objective reality and drew inspiration from the mind, like Dadaism, abstract art, futurism, and so on. Interestingly, the modernist design and architecture that rose at the same time developed an aesthetic driven by the post-war discourse on hygiene and social health. The aesthetic of the operating theatre, the hospital, of a place where the difficulties of everyday life would be expunged, would be fumigated out. At this point, images of death disappeared almost completely from art. Illness remained shrouded in silence in our culture, till the 80s and the outbreak of AIDS, when the narrative took a new turn towards social critique and activism. So, what is it played this time? Let's look at the art itself. Does this look like pandemic to you? It looks more like a website of a toy store to me. What we see is masks, gloves, toilet rolls, computer screens, bored, beautiful people, tired medics, yes bright, cheerful colors and a lot of humor. Numerous images of the virus itself ranging from pretty to cute. Any hint of suffering or loss or death? To me, the reaction of art to COVID-19, at least to this point, has been one of escapism into the Instagram aesthetic of pretending. We have dressed our fear like a clown, pretending that it doesn't exist. We've turned the killer virus into a pet toy. But if our collective instinct has led us there, probably this is the right strategy for dealing with it at this point. Clearly, we are still in a phase of denial. There are, of course, works where we can feel anxiety, fear, oppression, but even then the colors of spring dominate. So why is that? Well, first, thanks to the internet, we can be more connected than ever and remain safe. Death is well guarded and neatly tucked away from our life. Thanks to the advanced medical science nowadays, the killer is not invisible anymore. We know what it is, what it looks like, where it came from, and we want to feel superior to it. That's why we downgrade it into a pretty thing or a cute, squeezy toy. Nothing scary. If previous pandemics played out in the streets and in the homes, this one is acted out on screens, like a sci-fi horror movie. In fact, in movies we have seen far worse than that. We are detached. There are even COVID-19 deniers. Can you imagine anyone during the Black Plague or the Spanish flu denying that there is an epidemic? Of course, it is early days and most of the COVID-19 art is still to be created. It will take years. 
the day will come when the reality of this pandemic will start sinking in and we will see artists engaging in a deeper way with the important narratives that are emerging around this pandemic. And finally, it is time to cast a critical eye on my own pandemic painting, which I finished weeks before I even considered this video. I can see that it has its share of masks, screens, toilet paper indeed, but I think there is a little bit more to it. What do you see in it? I would love to hear your thoughts. If you're new to this channel, you may also want to have a look at my video, How to Look at Art. It will help. I hope you found this video interesting. Please give it a like, share and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that already. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Bye.